but they've had a minor foot operation in midweek. So the only change in the Skull Cup winning side is the introduction of 22-year-old Scott Nisbet, who will start his first match of the season, probably in central defence beside Richard Gall. He's the only player on the side who didn't cost the club a transfer fee. And Hibs manager Alec Miller makes two changes from the team which drew against Aberdeen last week. Graham Mitchell returns in defence to replace young Willie Miller, and Mickey Weir has been passed fit to play. The man dropping down to the bench to accommodate him is Billy Finlay. But the biggest boost at the club this season was the signing of Murder McLeod, who plays his fourth match for Hibs following his transfer valued at £350,000 from Borussia Dortmund. And he earned his 19th international cap recently against Switzerland. And the referee this afternoon, Mr Hugh Williamson from Renfrew. Well, Hibs were the last team to beat Rangers in the league way back on the 24th of March. They won by one goal to nil, a goal scored by Keith Houchin. So they come to Ibrox with a degree of confidence, enhanced also by their goalless draw back in September at Easter Road. The Rangers know this will be a difficult match. Mark Walters under pressure instantly there from Callum Milne. Way right back short by McLeod. Milne had to be quick. And the pass from Harlock goes behind Mark Cately. Well, there's still even a great deal of thinking going on between Alec Miller and his player coach, Mother McLeod, before the match. Houchin surprising a lot of people, I think, by popping up on the left side of the field for him. So there's Mark Walters getting caught in two minds in possession there. Callum Milne has been deployed to do a marking job on Mark Walters. There's Hamilton sending it over. Then away by Stevens. There's Harlock. And now Monroe. Graham Mitchell giving the depth in the Hibs defence. Fouled by right on this bit. Trying to clear the path there for Keith Houchin coming in from the left. by Kane, just right supported by McLeod that was played through, intended for Mickey Weir Weir is very quick to get to that stumbled there as he arrived at the ball, making life easy there for Richard Goff this is McCoyst away from Hamilton this is Harlock Stevens breaking on the right Haitley calling for the ball inside the penalty area but it was Easily mopped up by the Hibs defence. There's Weir and Kane. Hayfield yeah. chesting it down for McCoy. Pass goes behind Mark Walters. Couldn't get to it in time. Right to Milne. Stephen down towards Harlock. He's challenged instantly by McLeod. There's Paul Kane waving Pat McGinley up on his outside. Kane doing well, retaining possession. There's McGinley and Houchin going through. Clearance by Stevens. Patient play though in midfield from Paul Kane. He's back in possession again. That's for Mickey Weir, a great chance for Hibbs. Superb play it was from Hibbs. Ball flighted in there beyond Scott Nisbet. We had took it first time. Woods was beaten. And it's about one foot wide. Well, the Hibbs supporters behind Andy Gorham making lots of noise now. They've been greatly encouraged by a very impressive opening period from their team. Mickey Weir almost got that opening goal. A firm favourite with the hip supporters. Hayley did well. There's Stephen. It's a great cross by Stephen. And Hayley scores! 12 minutes gone. Mark Hayley gets his fifth goal for Rangers. 
cross coming over here. And Gordon Hunter looked to have the chance to clear this. He didn't manage it. And Hayfley forced the ball beyond and he got him. Oh, what a tremendous start to the match it has been. And Hibbs will consider themselves very unfortunate. They almost went ahead a moment ago through Mickey Weir. And suddenly they're a goal behind. McGinley Hutchins with a header it's Weir challenged by Speckman and Walters releases Hayley with a superb pass Ron Hunter with a cross Hayley making for the byline and that almost found McCoy in the box it was McGinley who cleared up with the help of Mitchell there's Harlock running into the club. Stevens. Target there is Hayley. McCoy's trying to set that up for Trevor Stevens and the save is made by Gorham. Hectic play in front of Andy Gorham. Nip Skipper trying to calm things down. But a lot of pressure here on Nip's defence. This ball looped across towards Mark Hayley, an intelligent header down. McCoy then tried to set that up for Trevor Stevens. Got the shot on target, but Gorham was well positioned. Spikeman towards McCoyst. Foul by McGinley. A little water warning suffices for referee Williamson. Led in by Stevens. Met by Mitchell. Sweeping the ball to the right for Milne. Cloud to Kane. As Houchen takes the turn from Weir. Now Kane. Right to McLeod. Kane seeing a lot of the ball in midfield at the moment for Hibbs. Houchen trying to get a little touch on there for Mickey Weir. Couldn't make it. to find Spackman with that clearance. And all reacts to the call from Chris Woods. Hayley again doing well in the air. The Spackman forcing his way through with a chance to test Andy Gorham. Back it goes to Walters. Marco's cross. Hayley again. Mark Hayley gets his second, and the Hibs defence had no answer. Well, fine play this from Spackman initially. He then turned it back to Walters. Walters looked up, saw Hayley at the far post. You'll see here the space that Hayley had. Uh, the powerful downward header beats Andy Gorham. Oh, what a fine start to the match for Mark Hayley. Taking his chance in the absence of Morris Johnston, who's injured. Spikeman's header. McCoyce goes away to the right. Stevens goes ahead. Takes the defender with him, leaving space for McCoyce. There's Harlock. This has gone wandering, followed across by his shadow, Callum Milno. And Houchen tidies up defensively. And he got him, doesn't lose many goals, but he's been beaten twice already in the match, and we're just within the first quarter. This bit's head up. Spikeman forcing his way out of midfield, looking for Hayley. Will take 
he could decide it was a last defender deliberate foul in which case McGinley could be shown a red card well, let's see what view was taken of this by referee Hugh Williamson well, young McGinley getting back as quickly as he could and the yellow card suffices a great chance for Rangers Stephen and Haith and Walters over the ball inside tackle was made there by Hunter and McGinley keeps the ball in play for Hibbs preventing a corner kick good play by Pat McGinley here goes Mill Hamilton getting away from Stephen fighting half a possession in midfield Hamilton Mill finds Weir the territory on the right wing well tackled by Monroe Kane using Mitchell Cloud breaks on the left breaks right through but Hamilton and another fine chance for Hibbs goes the begging that's been their problem all season only scoring five goals so far in the league in the ten opening matches this was fine play by McLeod. The ball finding its way across to Brian Hamilton. Monroe certainly did well, but Hibbs will consider that a chance lost. Sidestepping right. Hayley nodding that down into the path of Stephen. And almost the fourth. Gorham was in trouble, backpedaling furiously there, and not at all happy with his defensive teammates. Here was Trevor Stephen looking up, lofting that ball, trying to get it beyond Andy Gorham, and it goes agonizingly wide. Cloud looking for Houchin is onside. It's a great chance now for him. There's Houchin. The offside flag did not go up. Houchin got to the ball just ahead of Chris Woods, but the goalkeeper did just enough. 
to make sure that Hutchin couldn't retain the required accuracy and him still cannot find the breakthrough a little touch on there from Haitley to find McCoy Walters taking on Milne problems and how to contain this well-oiled machine this afternoon especially in attack where Rangers really have been deadly every attack carrying menace four goals so far and the threat always at the ball may follow Hibbs trying to regroup they've had some chance at half time to think things through and work out how they're going to handle this Rangers attack out of his hands on that throw is Haitley again he can't get enough of the ball this afternoon a rare error there by Andy Gorham still manage a smile despite the state of affairs very awkward ball that dropping from a height I shouldn't be beaten by Stevens but here's Brian Hamilton looking for the return from right player from midfield Brian Hamilton Walters going for this with Hunter they're both very quick pushed by Walters the goal will not stand Walters complaining he was fouled first or perhaps that he just used his shoulder I think that's more the essence of his complaint well these are two very quick players Gordon Hunter and Mark Walters and Walters claiming that he used his shoulder, but it did appear to use the arm as well, and that's why referee Williamson chopped the goal off. Peter Halstra is preparing, so too is Ian Ferguson out of the track. And a free kick to Rangers as Ferguson warms up. Free kick will have to be taken again. This time it's Trevor Stephen controlling things. Was deflected. The good save from Gorham. <laughs> Trevor Stephen has a taste for goal. He scored one fine goal in the first half, and then struck this very firmly. It took a deflection, which made that a good save from Andy Gorham. Near post ball missed by Walters. Spackman back to Stephen, who had to be quick to remain onside. That's great play from Stephen. Gorham punches free, it's down to Harlock. Here's McCoy. The Rangers fans would have loved that one. A little bit of applause for the Rangers players who've been totally in command in the second half. The goal hooked across by Harlock, helps on the run, but quick shot in the by the McCoy. And that burst of applause is one of appreciation for Mark Walters. He's had an outstanding match, and clearly now is being saved, I reckon, for a major onslaught against Red Star Belgrade in midweek. Peter Haustra is the replacement. Here's Harlock. 
across. It comes to Stephen. Now using Gary Stevens and Horlock in midfield again. Played forward by Nisbet, played on by Haitley towards McCoy. Good, determined defending there by Pat McGinley. And some brilliant setting up play again by Haitley. This is Martin McLeod. Team's not going the way he hoped, obviously. Played here many times, of course, for Celtic in the past. Hamilton, Mitchell, all played in early for Paul Wright, but Nisbet was in the way. Rangers cruising now. It looks so easy as they come forward. Passes spread around with remarkable accuracy. There's Hauster going inside, running into Hunter. Goes cross, there goes Haithley! And the Rangers fans hoping for Haithley's first hat trick of his Rangers career. Set up well, this ball by Stuart Munro. Haithley timing the leap, getting the header firmly toward the corner, just wide of the targets. Haithley again causing ball in the air, and it's McLeod who tucks in behind McGinley. Touched on by Houchin for right. It's for Weir. Challenge was made by Goff. Picked up again by Paul Wright. There's Houchin. Trying to get the ball free. Good play by Ian Ferguson. Set up for Mitchell Hadi. No, Stevens was there first. And Rangers in any event have a free kick. A foul by Mitchell and Ferguson. Ferguson holds the back of the leg in the hamstring area. Oh, good play from this bit. Shedding the confidence which has been surging through the ranks since the opening goal. Brian Hamilton robbing Ferguson. This is Weir. Kane. Taken right out of the play late by Harlock. That was a reckless one, all right. Williamson taking action. It's not by any means Hardluck's first foul of the match, and the Hibs fans really were I right there. As Hardluck came in very late indeed. He's been shown the yellow card. Paul Kane was the victim. Here's Mitchell. Right. Switching play to Hamilton. That's for Weir. He was very carefully watched by Gary Stevens. And Ferguson is now down on the ground. There he is, clutching the back of the right leg. Well, he's had such a dreadful time with injuries over the past year or so. It appears as though he's in trouble once again. Well, I wonder if Rangers may take him off as a precaution. He's barely on the field. Ten minutes of that. Explaining to the bench what the problem is. In the midst of all this, the Hibs have very upset these supporters with a long delay for Ian Ferguson's treatment. Paul Wright being withdrawn, and the replacement is young Mark McGraw. Son of the Morton manager and Man who cost Hibs £175,000 last year. He's very much an investment for the future, still just 19 years old. Ian Ferguson is still on the field for Rangers. There's McLeod. And now Hamilton. McLeod again. 
Milne to Beal. There's Milne again. Golf was caught there by McGraw, but there was no foul given. The ball played in early by McGraw. There's Mitchell. It came off Stevens. Appeals for handball. The referee quite convinced that that was not a penalty kick. Yeah, Mitchell looking hopefully towards referee Williamson. McGraw playing this across. Stevens didn't realise, I don't think, that Mitchell was there. And the referee appeared to be correct. And by Hamilton. There's Woods under pressure. Fine catch. Houchin was the hipster causing the problem in the air. And it looks as though Ian Ferguson will now be leaving the field. He's had the authority of the referee to do so. So another sad moment for Ian Ferguson limping off. Injured again. McCoy. Uh, Monroe rather, McCoy takes the pass. It's hate play, McCoy again. And a great save from Gorham. McCoy can't believe it. Well, Gorham enjoyed that all right. These international teammates played in there by hate play to McCoy. He knew exactly what he was doing there. Gorham stretching to turn the ball over. supporters have enjoyed a superb performance inspired by Mark Haley. Hibbs hanging on in the second half to retain some respectability. It's Rangers 4, Hibbs there. A victory every bit as comfortable as the score would suggest against, it must be said, a very poor Hibs side. Well, after the match, Jock Brown spoke to Mark Haley and he asked him how pleased he had been with his own performance. I'm very pleased, uh, personally pleased and pleased you know, for the team. Um, it's difficult coming off a Skull Cup final. You know, all the pressure's back on you again. Um, but, you know, we started, first 10 minutes was a bit, bit sluggish. I was still on a lap of honour, I think, first 10 minutes. But after we got going, you know, we, created, we created four chances and we scored four goals, which is always, you know, it's always nice looking, you know, looking forward to the game on Wednesday. Um, to be 4-0 up at half-time is uh, you know, every incentive for everybody, really. The first goal appeared to come as something of a surprise because you didn't appear to be the most likely player to get on the end of the cross. Uh, well, that's it. I, was, I arrived in the box late, and it was uh, it was an awkward an awkward cross that just missed the near post, and it fell into to the fullback. And I thought he was just going to, you know, side foot it wide, but um, he got stuck between his feet and I just got a foot to it and it screamed in the neck of the net. <laughs> <laughs> but the second one went in very crisply to the header. Yes, yeah, it was a great cross. Um, you know, bread and butter things for me on the far post like that. It's um, perfect. It's the ideal, ideal situation for me. It's just the ball to the far post and it's either back across goal or down towards the goal. I'm pleased with my fitness now. Um, it's been difficult because obviously I've been sitting on the bench for the last like, three or four games. But um, no, I think everything's coming together. The team know what we're doing. Um, you know, this, this year with, with myself playing is, is a totally different to how they played last year. So it's it's a whole new whole new ball game for everybody.